tell you what, Roland, I write, I read you my thesis of what I wrote the doctor, and you know what he said? He said that I had, I was a woman of substance, and I was graded, and I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna read you my paper. That will be good. Is this for me? Y'all are the sweet. Oh, look at that. You, you know Beulah's bound to do this because she does such unique things. Oh, isn't this just for you? Isn't that beautiful? That is so pretty. Beulah, you are so special. Mm, mm. I love that. I love that. Let me get this. I just feel so important when I do the deal. Oh, I love little boxes. Love Oh, isn't that pretty? Oh, Beulah. Beulah, that is so... Isn't that unique? That, you know why? You are the most feminine woman I know of. This is so feminine. I love this. It even looks like old timey, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks antique. Yeah. I think that's beautiful. Oh, and I think the bow is so pretty. Well, it's got glue on it. All of that. It's got glue on it. Don't put it on top of that. Don't put I it on. It's got, to... uh, it's got glue on it. I just glued it. Oh, you glued. Oh, oh, okay. I thought you just stick them with. Oh, yeah. Stick them on it. Oh, the sticky stuff was off the bow, so we had to pull it off. Oh, this the box. Is so, I just love that. That is so pretty, honey. I, and I love that necklace. I wear that all the time, and it's so, it's so dainty. I get so scared I'm gonna lose it. Yeah, you got a little box. Keep for it there. in there. Oh, that is so pretty. I love that. Well, hot pink card. <laughs> Those widgets outfits you're wearing almost. Oh, no. Oh. See the little bookmark in there? Mm. That's so, so you sweet. take that out and keep it where That's you so mark sweet. your book back. I know. I'm going to put it in my Bible. Oh, that is so sweet. That is so sweet. And look beautiful. Look. Ah, uh, it goes together. I oh, know. Isn't that beautiful? Well, I thank you both so much. Mm. You'll never know how much I, I appreciate this. That is one. Well, let me read you my book, my writings, and it, it's not long because I had to. Um, I went to the doctor, and my blood pressure kept staying so high, and he said to me, he said, Mary Alice. Why is it we just can't get your blood pressure down? What, what, what? He said, I know that you've had a death of your grandchild, and I know you'll never get over that. He said, but we got to get this down. He said, what's frustrating you, son? And I said to him, I said, well, I'm not anything really particular. I said, I guess I just set me goals and 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 do a lot of things. And since Chad died, it seemed like I feel like I've been cut off at the at the at my legs, and I just feel so empty. He said, Well, I'm gonna give you a little test. And he said, I want you to be very honest with me. He said, I'm writing an article about elderly people, and I I wanted to choose you because you are really remarkable for your age. He said, you, you, you're always positive. You have taken this death, although your blood pressure no, shows that it's very high. He said, but I, I, I want to write an article about you. He said, I'm going to give you a test, and what I'll do is I'm going to grade you on it. And he said, I'm going to ask you five questions. And he said, I'm going to write them down, and I want you as simple and as um, as you know how, yeah, I want you to write out clear and simple the greatest frustration you have. And the next question I got for you, I want you to to write out how you would like it to be. And in the, the first question was, 
uh, uh, write out, clear and simple, the greatest frustration, and this is what I wrote. I said, I don't hear well. My greatest frustration is not being a good is not being a good listener. I'm always thinking about what the answer is, and I miss finding out what is really important about that person. I interrupt too quickly. I feel I have heard it a thousand times. I have lived most of the emotions. I am so cocksure that I know the answer. I feel there is a solution to every problem many steps, ways to solve it, and you begin with yourself. You don't have to win or lose, you just have to feel good about yourself. You do have to accept. I don't like to be limited in my thoughts. I just need to express them better. My brain goes so fast. The second question was, write out simply how you would like it to be. I would like for my brain to slow down with trying to solve everything that comes my way. I used to think it was survival for me. I want people to take full responsibility for their own problems. I like sharing. I am a very compassionate person. I sometimes have to remind myself that people don't think my way. I get in trouble with this a lot. I learned early in childhood to be responsible for my actions. You have to pay a price. Life is a school. I learn from my mistakes. The third question was, write out the benefits of the number two questions. <clears throat> People that are responsible act with self-esteem. They don't talk out of both sides of their mouth. They act. They dream dreams. They're trustworthy. Remove themselves from the spotlight feels good, makes decisions wisely, happy loving people, positive thinking, people that learn from their mistakes, they don't judge, slow to anger, know they have a boss, a higher power, God is my boss, he is for me, don't have to have their way, take care of their body. And next question was, write out your commitment to number two. I, Mary Johnson Edwards, commit this day that I will try very hard to unload the trash in my, in my mind. It is wasting good energy. I want healthy friends. I will not try to fix or solve their problems and everything for them. They are responsible. I will listen. I will try not to interrupt. I will laugh a lot. When I mess up, I will try again. I love you, Dr. Williams, for caring about me. Sincerely, your friend, Morales. I'm going to buy my second flowers. And he said, read this two, three, and four, three times a day, Morales, a lesson in life. My journey on learning, my mind versus my mouth. Get rid of the toxic people in your life, Morales. Name them by name and pray for them. Learn to zip your lip. Forgo the urge to share each new glimpse of your inner world with others. It means keep some of it for yourself. And that was my paper, and I got a hundred. That's good. And he's really gonna, is. He's going to publish it. You were insightful, brother. And, and, he, and, and listen, he's gonna publish let me what? tell you, and that night, this is the beautiful thing. That night I went to, pee, I went to bed with a lot of peace, and I was reading, I was reading uh, this book. I, I, he told me. He said, Mary Alice, I want you to write your thoughts down. He said, because you are one of the most creative people I have ever known. And and you, you could write your own. And you know what he said? Now, again, this is beautiful. And this, I, I said to him, I said, Dr. Williams, I wake up every morning in my life at 2.15 or 2.30. I don't care what time I go to bed. I wake up at this time. And I said, I woke up. During the night, the other night, at, at my regular time, at 2.30 in the morning, I woke, and these words came to me, and I wrote, thank you, God, and it was as if I had dreamed them, and I had gone to bed praying for my children, I pray for y'all every night, and I had said, Lord, these are your children, you take care of them, and, I, and, and this is what came to me during the night, 
and it said, Take me, God, to the place where birds gather and talk. Take me to the place where my Jesus walked, where sweet contentment fills my soul, where arms of love makes me whole. With you, God, I long to be so safe, so secure for eternity. Written by Mary Johnson Edwards, a child of God. Be of good courage. Courage is fear that it has said its prayers. God put us in the fullest possible contact with reality, not as we imagine it, but as it really is. It did, he did so, it did so by making us aware of our own real selves and placing them in the presence of our Lord. Now that was what came to me, and it was so quick that I, 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 just jumped right up, took a pencil he had told me. Mm -hmm. You write down your thoughts. Right. <laughs> and so I began to keep this journal. Mm -hmm. And more idea. things have come to me. I cannot believe the things that have come to me. Mm -hmm. And I have found them in so many different places. And, and some of it is so beautiful. And some of these things come from books and other things has come from just thinking and a good friend of mine wrote down some of her sayings and she is she is 89 years old and she's doing this and and it says we are a pilgrim on a we are a pilgrim we are on a pilgrim road. It's rough and steep, and it winds up hills to the very end. We can lift up our eyes and see the unseen, a celestial city, a light and a welcome. We shall hold, behold him, and we shall be like him, and that makes a difference in how we go about growing old. And and she wrote some beautiful things. And, it said, and here was one that she wrote that I thought was absolutely gorgeous. If you were the one, if you were the only person on earth, the earth would look exactly the same. The Himalayas would still have their their drama. The Caribbean would still have its charm. The sun would still make nestle behind the rockets and spray light on the deserts in the morning. God would not diminish it, it its beauty one degree because He did this all for you. Next time a sunrise steals your breath on a meadow of flowers and it leaves you speechless, Re remain that way, say nothing, and listen as heaven whispers, do you like it? I did it just for you. Oh, that, this, is a, this is some beautiful stuff. Yeah, and my pretty. friend wrote some of this, and I wrote another one which I, um, that I thought was really pretty because when I read her stuff, I thought, I'm going to sure, sure look for all this. I saw the world last night through the eyes of my Jesus. Where was I? Strange. I was everywhere at once. The world was so small that everyone was my neighbor. Hmm. That's and you good. see, well, you are rather creative. You know what? I really, I'm telling you, you, you can put can, all that in a book and and, and you, you say, your own but listen, uh, 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 Elizabeth Hardy, who is 89 years old, was the one that that uh, started this book, and I started writing down the things that I, you know, I thought, mm -hmm. and that's what uh, Dr. Williams said, and I said to him, he wrote down on my paper, and he said. You are a woman of substance. He said, you, you have more knowledge of the true meaning of life than anyone I have ever met. And I said, well, Dr. Williams, that's the sweetest thing I've ever seen. I said, but I have lived it. He said, you couldn't know it if you hadn't lived it. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, I, that made me feel real good about myself because I knew that I had come a long way. Mm -hmm. <coughs> saying being responsible for your own self that means that I had really given all this stuff to God I could not have wrote that without that and and I thought about uh, just my strength did not come from me it came from my God and I knew that it says today I will love God and what God loves I choose joy I choose peace I choose patience I will forgive so I may live. 
I choose kindness. I choose goodness. I choose faithfulness. Today I will keep my promises. I choose to be gentle. If I tense my fist, may it be only in prayer. I choose self-control, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. If I succeed, I will give thanks. If I fail, I will seek God's grace. And then when this day is done, I will place my head on my pillow and rest. Aren't these that is real good. Come on. You need to go talk to somebody about that. No, this. listen, listen, these are not all mine. These are these are Lust, but she 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 wrote she and she wrote one that I thought was the prettiest thing that I had ever heard. She was looking at her window. And I mean this is one sweet woman. And she wrote about uh, the uh, the day Jesus died, and um, I tell you, I, I I sure do love this woman. Well, what are you doing? Huh? Mm -hmm. She's reading a book. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's all I got of you on video. You well, you know I don't like. You're looking at the camera, saying, "Stop it! Stop! Quit!" Stop it. I don't like it. I'm not Listen, so the best way to revive a church is to build a fire in the pulpit. <laughs> I thought that was cute. Yeah. I thought that was cute. <laughs> Roland went to my church when you were home. Yeah. Do what? He we went, went with me to my church. Easter Sunday. Oh, you did? Oh, uh, what what church do you go to here? Uh, Antioch Baptist. Antioch Missionary Baptist. Really? Really? It don't matter where you go as long as you love the Lord. Don't make a big difference. Them folks certainly love the Lord. Well, that's the way it's supposed they to be. They do that. That's the way it's supposed to be, Roland. But and he I... chickened out. He didn't go that night. I was tired of you. Um, and you went well, let me... Three and a half hours of church. <laughs> and, and... Oh, do y'all have it that long? Baby? No. It... From 10.30 to about 1.00. No, it was not. Listen to this. This is cute. Now, Elizabeth did this one. Dear Lord, so far today, God, I've done all right. I haven't gossiped. I haven't <laughs> lost my temper. Haven't been greedy or grumpy, nasty, selfish, or, or over any indulgence. I'm very thankful for, for that. But in a few minutes, God, I'm going to get out of bed. And I'm going to get uh, from... From then on, I am going to need a lot more help. <laughs> God, friends make our goals more reachable and joys more beautiful and our sorrows more bearable. Life would be bare and sober without them. Love sends us on a mission, stays close, and helps us to do what we cannot do on our own. I thought that one was sweet. I tell you, this gal can write. I'm, I'm so proud of her. I really am. Wave bye to the camera, look. Huh? Wave goodbye. Goodbye. Cut. You just got it cut, didn't you, Bill? Mm -hmm. I like my hair cut. I think it's good. You look better than I've ever seen you. You know who cut my hair? I don't know, but it's good. Beauty, did you do that? <laughs> Darn. With instructions <laughs> from Roland. It, yes. Let I me turn around and let me see the back of it. <laughs> Well, beautiful. I told him I was going to cut it. I didn't want to hear him fussing. I tell you what. He was scared to cut. I had to I make know, her cut. Because I, well, I know how fussy you are. But beautiful, you did a wonderful job. She did.